Welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover a powerful concept of many programming languages, object-oriented programming or OOP. Let's first start by quoting the definition provided by Wikipedia. So object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm uh, based on the concept of objects which can contain data in the form of fields, often known as attributes or properties, and code in the form of procedures, also known as methods. So to understand object-oriented programming, we first need to understand its terminologies. And the key terms here are classes, objects, attributes, and methods. So a class is, in short, a short way of uh, bundling data and functions together. When we create a class, we can use it to create a multiple instance of it, of it, and each instance is an object. Attributes, on the other side, are data that we use inside our classes, and they can be um, of any type, from numbers to dictionaries, it doesn't matter. And while methods are like functions, uh, but functions inside, um, so defined inside the class um, that we can use to manipulate its data. Methods can contain any data type as well as any control flow uh, tool like conditionals and loops, those that we uh, studied in the previous episodes. And so let's get started by looking at how to define a class and its syntax. So the first thing, uh, we have a class keyword. So we type the keyword class and followed by the name of the class that we want to define and the semicolon at the end. So let's say that we want class name I'll type it like that so you can uh, you can remember what you need to place here. So we have the class keyword, then we have the class name and the semicolon. After the semicolon, the body of the class is indented to the right, like we do every time that we define a, a, a function or uh, a, an if block or a loop. So the body is indented to the right and then we can use the pass keyword to um, to say that we will define that we will implement the class later on. So um, so to instantiate a class object, um, what we need to do is actually use the class name and follow uh, the class name with a pair of parentheses and then simply assign uh, the, the class, in this case, the class object uh, to the to a variable. So you can uh, use it for accessing the properties or the methods of the class later on. So let's define a person class. And then we simply pass so we can work on it later. So now, if we use the print function, um, sorry, if we first instantiate the class uh, object, so user, and then we say person and pair of parentheses. So this is how we uh, instantiate a new class object. So this is uh, this user uh, variable is going to uh, contain the instance of this class object. So let's print it and see what we get. So let's see. Let's run our code and see what we get. So this is the line of code that we get by calling this um, function, uh, the print function with the user variable inside. Uh, what is 
means is simply that we have the person class um, and then this object is in the position, this is the position in memory of the person class. So it's really not um, of much help, <laughs> but this is not a problem because that's not what we, why we want to define a class. Uh, so in this example, we created the class person and we use the pass keyword so we can implement the rest of the class later. Uh, on the next line, uh, so here, we have uh, instantiated the class, uh, the person class and stored its content inside the variable called user. Um, that's how we work with classes most of the time. So uh, when we here use the printers, the print function, we simply um, got as a result the object and its position in memory. So um, let's see uh, what, what are um, uh, class attributes. So we said before that a class has attributes, which are data that we can use to um, with functions to manipulate their output. So let's um, let's first as first thing replace this pass keyword and uh, I don't know define the name variable so it's a person and let's find the attributes here and we assign to this attribute which is the name attribute of the class uh, the string of Fabio and then we can access this name attribute using the dot notation which means that if we do that, let's replace the what's inside the print statement. If we do, if we append a dot after the um, uh, the variable, we see that we got a list of. Uh, in this case, this is the problem, one of the attribute, the one that we defined uh, when we created the class. So we can use it, and that it is. And when we print this class object, you will see that it will uh, it will render the name of Fabio. That's the string that we assign here. So we can also, of course, change the value of an attribute that in this case we are assigning to, uh, the string Fabio. And here we can uh, use again the dot notation calling the user object. Uh, instance and referring to the name attribute like we did here in the print function and then we can use the equal sign to assign to this um, name attribute a, a different value so let's see what we could do so let's get rid of this and say so here if we print username let's bring it back if we print username, we will get Fabio. Then we can again access the attribute name and assign to it another string. And then we can print it. So we should get different results it's because we changed its content here. So here we assign to the class person class a different value for the name and we print it again and you see that the content will be different um, so the first time that we call it it's Fabio and then the second time after we assign to it different value it's Farina so um, um, before we move um, to see how we can manipulate uh, data using methods. Uh, we need to introduce a, um, a special method called the constructor, and um, it is now um, is it uh, the constructor is um, a method that, that it's uh, that every time we instantiate a new uh, class, in this case a new version class, uh, we will get the same for now. Uh, we will get the same result. So if we here instantiate 
again this uh, user person and say user two, and then we print its name. Okay, and then we print its name. If we run the code, you will see that we will get twice the same result. Of course, we can change the value of the name attribute using this dot notation, but um, there is there is a better way, and it's the constructor. So um, uh, what it does is simply um, every time we instantiate a new object, a new class object, uh, we will be uh, able to set the um, a group of uh, attributes, those that we want to define, uh, every time that we instantiate a different object. So the syntax of a constructor uh, method is the same of a function, or in this case, since we are talking about functions inside uh, a class, we, um, we call them methods. So we start by in using the def keyword inside, let's copy this. Um, let's say constructor here. So now um, let's get rid of this. We don't need it. So the first thing that we are going to do now is to use the def keyword to define a, a new um, a new method, uh, and then uh, we follow with the name of the special constructor method, which is the init. So this is a special method. So uh, every method that starts with a double underscore is uh, considered a special method. So inside the parentheses of the um, init uh, function, we need to uh, first uh, use the um, um, the special attribute self. Self essentially refers to the, um, the class object itself. Uh, so after that, we can uh, pass to this function um, the attributes that we want to define every time that we want to instantiate a new object class. So in this case, um, we can say uh, name, so we don't have to define, uh, we don't have to hard code the name in here, like we did here, and every time we can see the class at the same name, and then we can say age, and then the semicolon, as we do uh, always when we have a function, and then we indent the body of the constructor, uh, to the right, like we do with functions. So, so far it's the same. It's the same thing that we've been studying uh, up till now. And then now, uh, what we need to do is use the self special attribute and um, use the dot notation to access the name um, attribute. And then we assign it to the name, name. Okay, like that. Um, then we do the same with the age. So what this does, uh, when we instantiate a new class, this is the first. This first method uh, is called um, without us uh, invoking this method. So it's called uh, automatically every time we run. Uh, we do that. Okay, every time we do that. Um, this method is uh, runs and it's asking for two arguments that we uh, have to pass to this uh, class object. So now uh, what we need to do is simply define our name in here inside the parentheses. So first name is Fabio and let's say I was 50 and uh, now we can assign this to a variable user Fabio, user A, and then we can use the same code as you see now. Uh, we have um, a 
the opportunity to reuse the code that we defined here and simply write the same uh, line in here replace this with a b and then we can say serena serena is 30 and then like that we have used the same code in here if we had like function methods and other properties uh, we didn't have to uh, repeat ourselves over and over but we, we could use like a class like that that wraps everything and bundle everything for us so we can access its properties and methods using the dot notation so if we now want to print a message using the information that we have from the construct from this class person uh, what we need to do is simply use the uh, where is the variable and then we can access the name attribute and then we can access the age attribute like that so uh, we forgot to instantiate to um, to instantiate one of these attributes here inside the um, the constructor you will see that we will get an error uh, and then the error that we will get is uh, related to the fact that a, it sees it as a variable which is not defined anywhere instead using the self um, special attribute we refer to this name attribute as the name of the, the class so the one that we pass when we instantiate the object so this will become available for us inside the uh, class and we can then refer to it in this way so let's see now um, what we get when we run this code so you see this is the last line that we printed this one at line 34 and we got Fabio 38 yeah, because we used B instead of A, okay. Uh, run again, so we have Fabio 50, which is the, um, what we passed as parameters of this uh, class object. And um, so in this example, what we have done is um, define the special method, uh, this, so the constructor using the init function that uh, so that it's our constructor and it's running every time we instantiate a new object class using the parameters that we want to pass to it and the first argument is the self uh, special arg attribute and uh, that refers to the object instance so we must use it every time we define a new method or we reference to one of the uh, attribute inside of a class. So um, arguments uh, of a constructor are like those of a function. So we have positional and keyword arguments. Um, to instantiate a new object, we must pass to it every positional argument that we uh, define because these are mandatory well we can skip the keyword arguments as they already have a default value assigned to them so let's see uh, what I mean uh, let's copy that So like we did he up here, we can uh, define as many um, attributes that we need. So now we'll define, for instance, a nationality um, attribute and I will assign to it a value. And then now what I'm going to do is uh, define another attribute 
and this time I will pass to the attribute an empty list. So every time we instantiate it, we can either pass some content inside the empty list or uh, leave it empty if we don't uh, have anything to pass to it. So let's see. Well, what happens when we try to instantiate this class okay, without anything? And there is a mistake that I'm going to fix in a minute, but I need to show you what happens now. So let's run this code. And you see, we've got type error because the init function, which is our constructor, requires two. Uh, position argument which are the name and the age uh, but we didn't pass anything so let's define them and as you see um, there is another error that, that I will show you um, in a minute um, let's say we have Fabio and age 40 and let's run this code now so now everything seems fine. However, let's assign this object class to a uh, variable. So user Fabio. Okay, now um, we say that we can um, access the attributes uh, that we define inside the uh, constructor, but let's say if I try to access the skills or the nationality as it the code is right now, what we got. So just by using the dot notation, you will see that there is no uh, reference for these nationality and these skills attributes that we define. And why is that? So let's try to code them. And then let's use the print function to see what we got. And you get an attribute error because the person object has no attribute called nationality. Despite we define this here, we didn't uh, use the self keyword to reference this nationality attribute that we passed here as the as an attribute of the class person of the person class so let's do it now and so we are saying that this uh, the instance, the, the skills attribute of the person class instance is uh, equal to the skills attribute. So now, when we um, instantiate the person object as it is, so now these two objects, these two attributes have a value. So we are, uh, these are keyword arguments. Instead, these are the position attributes that we pass to this uh, function. But now, as, the, as they are, we cannot, um, we can, as it is, instantiate this class and we will get Italian because it is a keyword argument. So the, uh, this, is, this has a default value. And so every time we instantiate the class without specifying anything different in here, we will get what we define as false. So if I try to do the same thing with the scales, I'm not going to get any error, but simply the default value. So an empty string and Italian. If I want, since these are keyword arguments, I don't have to respect um, the order. Um, so the order we use to define them, but I can simply say skills, and then inside the square brackets, I would say Python PHP 
So I would define the list and Laravel. Okay, you got the idea. Laravel. Okay. Uh, so now when we run the code, we will get, of course, Italian because we didn't use this um, keyword argument anywhere. And the skills list that we defined when we uh, instantiate this new class object. So, um, what if we instantiate this only? You should be able to guess it. So, we got a type error because these two arguments, which are the position arguments, are missing. So the position arguments, as I said before, are mandatory. So we need to use them every time we instantiate a new object. Otherwise, we won't be able to uh, run the code correctly. So we instantiate them. And um, so now, every time we instantiate this person object, so in this case, this, we can pass to it different, vari different values and we will get a different object every time. So, and then skills. Uh, just random skills, like that. And you see, you get only, still only mine, because we have use the same variable so let's say Serena and then we um, use it and say uh, let's output the skills uh, let's print it so now you will see that we have two different results see here list of skills for this uh, Serena person and these are this list of skills for this Fabio person uh, that we defined. So as you see now, uh, this is making more sense, I hope. Um, so we don't, if we don't um, need to uh, instantiate a, an attribute here, but we could if you want, uh, depending on your requirements for uh, the code that you're working on. Uh, you could, for instance, define a um, last family name here and assign it um, to an empty string that later you could use a method uh, that when, it, um, when we run it, we can update the name, uh, the family name. So that's one of the I think that we can do using the objects, mm, the uh, class, so using object oriented programming. Um, so uh, let's move to um, defining methods inside our class. So define a method. Okay, so we say that methods are like functions, but we are, they are defined inside the class. So to define a method, we use the same syntax uh, of uh, a function, but inside the parentheses, we need to use the special attribute self uh, in the same way we did it here, up here. And um, so we can assess the class instance attributes. Um, and let's see um, how we can define a method. So, Let's say that we want to calculate the year of birth of person. So let's copy this again and move it down here. Okay, now we have these things. Let's get rid of this and this that we don't need for now. So um, we have name and we have the age, pretty simple stuff. And uh, let's define a method. So we use the def keyword, and then we want to um, 
define the name for our method. So let's say so in the area of BERT and then a pair of parentheses like with functions, semicolon. And then we need to use the self keyword in here, uh, the special attribute. And then now we can use our, um, we can define some code inside our method. So let's say that we want to calculate this here. Let's import the module. So I'm going to use one of the module from the Python standard library and it's the date time module. Um, so let's say that now inside this function, inside this method, we want to say we have now um, the time, the time here. Uh, no, no. Then here, here, okay. So now, so what this does is we uh, use the date module, date time module, and then we call the now uh, method which returns the current date, and then we extract from from it the year. These are all functions and attributes that are um, defined inside this module. The module is essentially a block of code um, that is defined in its own um, file or set of files and folders uh, with functions and methods and attributes that we can use uh, to do different kind of tasks. Um, let's see um, what we have to do now. So let's define a new variable here of bird and now let's simply do now. So in minus, so now in this case contains the um, year, so 2020. So that, that gives us 2020. And let's say minus, so we have the age here, and we say that every time we need to watch this age um, attribute, we need to use the self keyword because we are referencing to the age uh, defined when we instantiate the object. So we don't know what, what is its content because we are going to um, instantiate the class later. So let's say self, so the instance of the class, and then we say age, and that will return um, the year of birth. So let's say return and the message. And I'm going to use the format function on the string to pass some content uh, to replace the placeholders. And then here we say uh, your birth. So when we reference to a, a variable that is defined inside our class, like this one, this is a simple variable, we don't need, we don't need to use the self um, attribute because it's a function, is a variable like any other that we defined inside a method. Uh, but this is uh, a uh, one of the attributes that has been uh, that we get when we instantiate this class object. So this uh, give us as the self keyword gives us access to the instance of the object, and then we use the dot notation to grab the name. And then uh, we simply uh, use in here the variable. So let's see what we get. Person, no. So you see that the when we open the uh, 
um, when we write our code inside an IDE like this, which is Visual, Visual Studio Code, the IDE will suggest us what um, to do next. So here it's telling us to uh, pass a name and then we need to pass it by an age um, parameter to this. It's like a function, but this is the class instance. Uh, so let's say Fabio. And then let's say 55. And then now, uh, how do we call this calc here of bird method? Like we do when we want to access, for instance, the name. Okay, in the same way, using the dot notation, we can call the function. So calc. That's Calc year of birth, and then as it is, it will return when so we use uh, here we use the um, return um, keyword inside this method. So we need to use the print function to see the output. And then when we run our code, you will see Fabio was born in 1965. So Let's recap a little bit. These are pretty complex concepts, uh, so it might take a while before they click. Uh, so in this example, we defined a method inside the person class that calculates the year of birth of this person that we instantiate. So inside the method, we define two variables um, the variables defined inside the method does not need to be uh, prepared with the self attribute um, as, as they are local variable uh, inside the method uh, scope and not class attributes. So we then a reference um, to one of the class attributes, uh, we must use the self. So when we uh, reference to one of the class attributes, we must use the self dot and the attribute name syntax, but it's the same with methods. And uh, what so in here we use the date time. Uh, I will show you in a minute what happens when we don't use the self um, special attribute. Uh, but in here, so we use the date time module to grab the current year and then we assign it to the now uh, variable. Then we define this other variable uh, and we uh, made this simple calculation to grab the um, um, date of birth, the year of birth of this person, and then return the message. So in this line, we instantiate the class object and we assign the instance of the class object to this variable. And then when we use the variable uh, followed by a dot and one of the attributes or a, or a method name um, that we define inside our class, we can access its attributes or uh, the method. So we can call the method. So let's see what happens when we don't pass a we don't use the self. Let's say that we want we don't uh, pass a name. Uh, we don't use the self dot name in here, but we just use it name as it was a simple variable. So here we go. We have a name error, uh, which means the name name is not defined. If I were if I were to use uh, another so now it's name name because we called this attribute name. Uh, so if it was description or age, uh, you will see that the name age is not defined. So let's bring this back and let's do the same thing in here. In here. So, so the idea doesn't tell us it's wrong, but it's actually wrong. 
So while we run the code, you will see that we got name error, name attribute. So the name of the the attribute name age in this case is not defined. So it doesn't know what to do. So essentially we need to bring it this back and you will get what you expect. So this message that you defined in here. So that's it for this episode. In the next video, we will cover inheritance and subclasses. And that's it there. Cheers.